watching Faith World TV. Faith World TV, changing the world with the Word of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. May God richly bless you uh, for tuning in, for joining us in our study today. And I just want to seize this opportunity to thank all those who have been studying with us and who has been also praying for us and supporting us financially. May God truly bless you and replenish you in the mighty name of Jesus. As we come before the Lord, let's uh, ask him to cleanse us because we stand on holy ground. Our God is holy. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you for giving us this opportunity, O oh Lord, to sit at your feet, O oh God, to hear your living word, the bread of life. We ask, O oh God, that you forgive us, cleanse us, O oh Lord. We pray as we expose ourselves to your truth that will not be hear us only, but do us of your word in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that your word will bring healing to our souls. For as many, O oh God, who are down at the moment, O oh God, uh, that, Lord, you will strengthen them in their spirit. You strengthen their heart, renew their strength, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let your word bring renewed cheer and hope in the name of Jesus. And for those who are sick, those who are battling with sickness, Father, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You, you are the Lord who forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases. So, Lord, we, we seek your face. We ask in your mercy that your healing grace will begin to flow. Oh, Lord, as we listen to your word, oh God. Oh, yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And the people of God say, Amen, Amen. So God bless you. The Word of God, um, the Word of God I have for us today, titled um, "This Contentment, a Major Peace Killer in Our World Today." And this is taken from a scriptural text from the Book of Hebrews, chapter twelve, verse fourteen, where God encourages us to pursue peace or walk at living at peace with everyone, and um, holiness without which no one will see the Lord. But in our previous messages, we've learned that for us to have um, the peace of God in our own lives, we need to have peace with God first. Uh, because the Bible talks about three kinds of peace, peace with God, peace of God, and peace with others. So for us to be able to walk at peace with others. We need to have peace of God in our lives. And for us to have the peace of God in our lives, we need to have peace with God. But today, we want to talk about a major issue, a very serious issue that is plaguing our world today, uh, which are called a major peace killer, which is, the, which is called the spirit of discontentment. The spirit of discontentment. And this is one of the major tools, most effective tool of the devil of stealing our joy and peace. We know that is Satan's MO. And John 10.10 10 says he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So he comes to steal our joy. This spirit of discontent is so subtle that it's destroyed many lives, families, and churches. So what is this contentment? This contentment is a feeling of not being satisfied with one with the state of one's life in this world the feeling of not being satisfied with the state of one's life in this world you see and there's this pandemic there's this there's this pandemic of this of this virus this discontent virus aka major peace killer it is ra rare very rare to find you know anyone who is truly content, if we're going to be honest, because there's that desire for more power, you know, more money, you know, a higher position, more pleasure, more likes and so forth. And even today, we're not even satisfied with the way we look. We are not satisfied with our parents. We were not satisfied with the way God made us. Hence that rice, hence the rise of cosmetic plastic surgery, um, even um, and also gender reassignment surgery when people are not satisfied with the way God made them as a male or female, and also the body enhancement surgery, trying people trying to um, you know um, 
improve their body parts or due to influences, ungodly influences of the, of, the, of the world. world. And this is what the Bible says in regards to that when we are not satisfied with the way God made us. In Isaiah chapter 45, verse 9, the Bible says, What sorrow awaits those who argue with their creator? You know, they say, oh, stop, Lord, you are doing it wrong. Does the pot exclaim, how clumsy can you be? And the Apostle Paul actually made it clearer in Romans 9.20. He says, no, don't say so. Who are you, mere human being, to argue with God? Should the thing that was created say to the one who created it, why have you made me like this and this is what most people are saying today this is what we are saying when we are not content we are not happy with the way god made us and this contentment is an infectious diseases you know and it's spread you know by the spirit of darkness it is promoted by the devil through his agents of darkness. In 1 John 5 19, the Bible says the whole world lies under the power, under the sway of the enemy. And Satan is using mass media and internet to prov promote advertisements of material things, successful people, you know, celebrities, good looking people, good looking men and women, you know, fake lifestyles, you know, self advertisements uh, for example, on social media, for example, of my relationship, you know, my life, my holidays, my house, you know, my boyfriend, my girlfriend, you know, my car, my restaurants, you know, the restaurants I eat in, eat in you know, and so forth. And the purpose of this advertisement is to create desire for the flesh. It is, is to create dissatisfaction in us. It is, is to create discontent in us. You know, you know for example, you may have um, a phone and you know it's working well and then you see this advert on TV. Oh, and it is new model, you know, this new version and, you know, and, and People feel desire to get that new thing because they want to be among the first to acquire those new things. So these things create this dissatisfaction in us, discontent in us. And the Bible says, you know, those who, you know, lack contentment are actually friends with the world. And the Bible wants us as Christians not to be a friend of the world. Let's see what God says. In 1 John 2, 15 to 17, it says, we should not love the world, nor the things of this world, nor the things the world offers to us through these advertisements. He says, you do not have, if, you, if, you, if you have this love, you do not have the love of God in you. He said, for the, for the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure. A craving for everything we see we just want to buy or a pride in our achievements and possessions. They say these are not from God, these are from the world. The Bible says this discontentment, this attitude of discontentment is seen. It's, it's, a, it's a form of idolatry because we are saying, you know, we're not happy or, or, or unless we have that person, that thing. We are saying we treasure or love that thing or that person or that experience more than Jesus. We are saying we are not fulfilled, not satisfied, or have significance in this life unless we have those things. We are putting those things ahead of Christ. So the Bible calls discontentment a sin of covetousness. In Exodus um, 20, 17, the Bible says, you know, you must not covet your neighbor's house. Your, you must not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female servant, ox or donkey or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. You know, this, this, um, this culture, this anti-God culture motivated by the spirit of this age creates that spirit of discontent and covetousness. The Bible says we need to flee from idolatry. First John 5.21 says, you know, we should flee from anything that would take God's place in our lives. That makes us, you know, love those things more than God. 
in 1 Corinthians 6, 10, the Bible says, those who are covetous or greedy will not inherit the kingdom of God. He said, thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, we inherit the kingdom of God. Now, apart from the spirit of discontentment being promoted by the spirit of this age to advance, the sad thing, also, the sad thing is that the spirit of discontentment is also promoted, you know, within the church by false teaching of material prosperity in our churches today. And this is not something new because the Apostle Paul was admonishing um, this young pastor called Timothy, you know, to, to avoid such false doctrines that, that, that say godliness is a means of making wealth. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, from verse 5, we read this from the Bible. It said, these people are cause trouble, their minds are corrupt, and they have turned their backs on the truth. He said, to them, a show of godliness is just a way of making wealth. Yet the Bible says, true godliness is great gain. True godliness with contentment is great gain, is great wealth. So Paul, the apostle Paul, admonished Timothy in 1 Timothy 6, 11, says, but you, Timothy, you're a man of God. Flee from those things. Pursue righteousness. Let righteousness be your goal. That's what Jesus said. Seek ye first God and his kingdom, his righteousness. He said, seek a godly life along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. You see, and we're here today, which is all, you know, certain like promoting those kind of things to, um, to, 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 to slander the church, you know, to... Um, critical that the church to bring the church a bad name. We see adverts of f f these women Christian um, uh, men preachers using their positions to amass wealth, you know, so they can lead luxurious, extravagant lifestyles. But the Bible frowns at those things because it is, it is against the truth. You know, Paul said, to the church in Corinth, 2 Corinthians 2 17 says, You see, we are not like many oxters, these charlatans who preach for personal profit. He said, We preach the word of God with sincerity, you know, and with Christ's authority. Why? Knowing that God is watching. We need to examine ourselves as pastors, as ministers, as prophets. Uh, we need to examine our motive for for preaching the gospel. You know, in, in the Old Testament, Jeremiah prophesied, predicted men and women like this in the last days. He said, from the, in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 13, he said, from the least to the greatest, their lives are ruled by greed. From prophets to priests, they are all frauds. And they are, they are with us today. Again, the Apostle Peter in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 3 said this, in their greed, they will make up clever lies to get hold of your money. But God condemned them long ago. Uh, people like that in the Old Testament, there was a man called Gehazi. He was a servant of this great man of God called Elijah. Elijah. And um, a, a, a general uh, of, 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 of the army of Syria called Naaman came to um, asked for healing and um, this man was healed and asked to bless the man of God and Elijah said no you know thank you you know the, the, um, the gifts of God are free freely you receive freely you give uh, um, and then he sent him on his way you know because the gifts of God is healing his blessings uh, uh, comes from his grace and uh, through the, the the death of his son Christ paid uh, paid it all so we cannot sell God's blessings for money because it is by the grace of God. But a servant, Gehazi, you know, after the man has left, went after him. And what did he say to the man? He said he lied, you know, he, he lied, he misrepresented the man of God, just as many people are misrepresenting God today, and said to the man, oh, my master said he needs some clothing, some money, because some people came um, to visit unexpectedly. But he lied, and the Bible said that man was cursed with leprosy. So, you see, the mixed mistakes that these teachers do uh, of, of false prosperity, preaching false prosperity, is that, you know, we, we make, you know, uh, eat the norm. They make their lifestyle the norm, the goal, that if you 
follow my, my, my example. This is what you're going to become. This is what Christian is all about. What I am, what I have got, my mansions, my cars, you know, my planes. But this is a false gospel because it does not apply in every place. This is not the truth. You know, it is not the truth because, you know, when you come from place like North Korea, China, Pakistan, if we're a Christian, you know, you, you know, you, you either, it, it will be, you, you'll be blessed to survive. Some are, are, are killed. Some are put in prison. Some are tortured. Some lose their business. And this is what's happened to the Hebrew Christians. That this is what the Hebrew Bible, the Hebrew, uh, the, uh, the, the, the writer was talking about in, in the book of Hebrews because there are Christians there who are suffering. There were Jews who have become Christians, who have lost their goods, their possessions because they deny their Jewish faith. They deny Judaism to become Christians. They're suffering and they're going through hard times. And the writer was encouraging them to stand strong and stand firm. So, you know, because we need to know the truth that, you know, we are called as Christians, not only to believe. Yes, God gives blessings. Yes, God blesses people with material prosperity. Yes, but also, you know, we're also called to suffer, you know, for our faith. Amen. So, you see, so what is true prosperity? You see, we have to understand what true prosperity, because that would help us, you know, uh, uh, um, help us to have a peaceful life. You know, what is true prosperity? True prosperity is having shelter over your head. Do you have shelter over your head? You have prospered. I know people use scriptures like First John 3, 2, God wish you that you prosper and be, uh, above all things, that you prosper and be in good health as a means of, you know, building a theology of financial prayer. Yes, you know, uh, but true prosperity is when you have shelter over your head. If you have food on your table, if you have clothes on your body, that is prosperity. That's what the Bible says in 1 Timothy 6, 8. It said, so if we have enough food, clothing, let us be content. Do we preach these messages of contentment? You see, because we will see the danger of this contentment right now. We see the dangers in, of this con what this contentment has brought to, to, to people's lives, to families, to nations. Let's, let's look at it. Let, let's, let's look at it together. The danger of the negative event of discontentment. It will destroy your health. Proverbs 119 says, such is the fate of all who are greedy for money. It robs them of life and that people are walking 24-7. You know, just to make money, to outshine their neighbor. Uh, they, 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 they sacrifice their health at the altar of mammon. Secondly, it can destroy your family. Proverbs 15, 27 says, greed brings grief to the whole family. There was a man in the Old Testament called Achan. His greed brought destruction to his family. Okay, there are people who have been tempted by the devil. You know, maybe you have this job. It's okay. You know, you are doing well, but you know, you are greedy. Satan brings this job to you. Yes, it's more money, but Satan knows you are someone who loves money. And you get this job, it pays more, but at the expense of your health, of spending time with your family, you know. And, 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 and then it, this job brings you stress. So what's the use of more money with more stress? Again, Discontentment will steal your peace and joy because you are waiting for that big break. You are waiting for, you are waiting for someone, waiting for something to be happy. It steals the present joy, your present joy and happiness. It also, discontentment also destroys the economy of nations, which we see many nations today. The greedy men and women, greedy politicians, you know, they've got more than enough, but yet they are not satisfied. Just amassing more and more wealth, money they cannot spend, where people are dying, starving, homeless, you know, sick, bad roads, you know, all kind of stuff happening because of greed read. This contentment also destroys the spirit of generosity. You see, because when someone is, is bound in amassing more and more, desiring more and more, they don't have the heart for people. Even there, I mean, uh, there are some fathers who, because of their goal, are not even giving to their wives or even giving to their children because they want big things. They want great things. They want to be seen to, to, uh, among the rest, uh, in, uh, uh, among the crowd to, uh, to have acquired this and that. 
So it destroys, it destroys the spirit of generosity to be a blessing to others or also to the, to the church of God. It also destroys the heart of gratitude because a discontent, discontented person is not happy. He's always moaning and groaning, mumbling and grumbling. It's not thankful because disaster is not grateful to God. It also contributes discontentment, also pro promotes crime in societies. Yes. Jeremiah 17, 11 says, Like a partridge that hatches an egg she has not laid, so are those who get their well by unjust means. You see, they are greedy for gain. You know, so people go into crime, you know, because, you know, they are not content with their life. They're not content. You know, say prosperity is having shelter. There are many people without shelter. They are homeless in the world today. The prosperity is having food on your table. There are many people that are starving. They can't eat three square meals. If you can eat three square meals, thank God. Or if you have clothing, you are saying, thank God. That's prosperity. That's been well being. But, you know, there's this more people are not satisfied. It will destroy your spiritual health. That people, because of this discontentment, you know, they don't have time for God, time for their to, time, time, to, time for God to, to have that private time seeking God, reading the Bible, you know, praying. They don't have time even for to go to church because they are working 24 7, they're exhausted. So they can't go to church, they can't give themselves to the work of God. The Bible says, Jesus said this, that the seeds that fell among the tongue represents those who hear the message. But all too quickly, the message is crowded out by cares and riches, the deceitfulness of riches of wanting more. You see, we need to preach contentment in our churches today. We need, as a church, we need to be the voice of conscience to our nation. That contentment is godliness. Because everybody wants more and more and, and people are stepping on others. People will destroy other people's life in order to be famous, to be rich, to have this stuff. Discontentment leads to more and more envy, jealousy, stress, dis dissatisfaction, competition and comparing. You see, that's the spirit of discontentment. You see, comparing ourselves with our neighbor, competing. Well, they've got this, I need to get something much better. They've got that, I have to get something much better. A bigger field, a bigger house, bigger TV, and so forth. Ecclesiastics uh, chapter 4, verse 4 from the New uh, Living Translation says, Then I observe that most people are motivated to success because they envy their neighbors. This is meaningless. The Bible says, chasing of the wind, vanity upon vanity. Again, 2 Corinthians 10, 12 says, For we they are not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who are commend themselves. But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. That is the world we live in today. People are not contained. I pray that God will give us a spirit of contentment. That as, as, as God's people, as the church of God, we preach contentment. You see, discontentment also can damn a soul in hell. 1 Timothy 6 verse 9 says, But people who long to be rich. You see, God is not against riches. Next week when we talk about contentment, okay, con when we talk about contentment, we, we see that riches is, to be rich is not sin. But there are those who long to, who desire, who are not satisfied, who feel that, you know, having something is not enough. They want something, you know, um, that outshines, that their motivation for buying things is not because they need it, but it's for status. And we need to examine ourselves. Why do we buy what we buy? Do we buy it, you know, because we need it or do we buy it for status? He said, people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. Now I'm going to round up. And I pray as we listen to this word that God, you know, we, will, will, will um, 
give us the grace to truly examine ourselves and be honest about ourselves, you know, to, to, that God will give us the grace, you know, uh, to, to overcome the spirit of discontentment, you know, to, to, we, we pray that through the power of the blood of Jesus, this spirit of discontentment will be, will be killed, will, will die in, a, in, a, in our lives, in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in our homes, and church, in the name of Jesus. And I also pray that if you are listening to me today, you've not given your life to Christ. There's no way you can have peace. Remember, as a Christian, if you're a believer, you know, you cannot have true peace if there is discontentment. But I pray today you overcome that in Jesus' name. But if you're not a Christian, if you don't have, if, if, you, if, you, if you have not given your life to Christ, you will never have peace. Even if you have fame, if you have money, that cannot give you peace because peace comes from a right relationship with God. And if you've not given your life to Christ, why don't you pray this prayer with me? Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Please forgive me. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. I receive him into my life. I confess him as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me and make me your child today. In Jesus' name. If you said I pray, mean it all your heart. God is forgiving you, a child of God, and God is faith to grow in your faith, reading your Bible, fellowship with other believers, you know, and speaking to Him as well because God loves you. So, once again, I thank you for watching. I see you, same time, same place, as we look at contentment. So, God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Watching Faith World TV. Faith World TV, changing the world with the Word of God.